Welcome to the Introduction to Geographic Information Systems and Science lecture series developed by the Quinney College of Natural Resources at Utah State University. My name is Chris McGinty. I'm the Associate Director of the Remote Sensing GIS Lab here at Utah State University on the Logan campus. I will generally be narrating these slides and hopefully providing you with some good information and examples and some good theory as to what GIS and GIS science are. The overall goal of this lecture series is to develop a firm understanding of geographic information sciences and geographic information systems. Geographic information sciences is the underpinning theory of the tool we know as GIS or geographic information systems. For the most part we'll be generally following concepts as described in the book Introduction to Geographic Information Systems by Dr. John Jensen and by Dr. Ryan Jensen. So let's dive right in and begin discussing why is geography important? It's a seemingly simple question and we can answer it with almost as simple of an answer because almost all activities and decisions or events involve geography in some way. A couple of examples though a little easier to understand would be human habitat. Well it's a very spatial thing. We all have a specific habitat in which we live there's reasons we live there, perhaps it's work or kids or uh, research or going to school. Well, currently my habitat can be defined as 84321 or my zip code. Now there's many other defining characteristics of this area or this region, but certainly I can say that my habitat is at 84321 or the zip code for Logan, Utah. Another example more related to wildlife would be wildlife habitat locations. Now we know by sampling wildlife habitat locations that we can start to use GIS or geographic information systems to do some predictive modeling. And we'll get more into that in the future lecture series, but generally speaking, we can look at a species and we can look at where they live, what they prefer, different types of topography, precipitation, and we can start to make some predictions based on their environments. And we were able to take that information through a number of spatial analyses and produce a map that would indicate where highly suitable habitat would occur for these sage grouse. As we proceed through the lecture series, it's highly probable that you'll hear me use the term geospatial quite often. In fact, sometimes it can be interchanged with the word GIS. So you could say GIS analysis or geospatial analysis, but it bears us understanding what the term geospatial actually means. So just breaking the word down, very simple. We understand that the word geo is Latin and it refers to the earth. Well the second portion of the word spatial really relates to or occupying or having a characteristics of space or perceiving some relation of objects in some space. So we talk about geospatial, we're talking about the relationship of objects on the surface or near the surface of the earth. Geospatial sciences, which is something you'll also hear, is really the study of where objects or phenomena are and how they relate to each other on the surface of the Earth. It generally relates to the surface, but can also relate to near-surface events uh, such as climate, uh, precipitation, uh, wind, temperature. So as we move through all this information, we start to realize that knowing where is very important. Since almost everything happens somewhere, Knowing the XY location or the coordinate or the spatial location that something happens is extremely critical. As an example, a very simple but very powerful example, uh, a number of years ago we had Hurricane Irene that impacted Florida. And we've had a number of hurricanes that you could show or natural disasters that, that you could show that indicate why knowing where is very important. So why would this be important? Well, you can simply answer that by saying, well, because we need to know what path this storm is taking, where should people evacuate, what route should they take, what is the anticipated damage, or what is the damage that has occurred, what utilities have impacted, been impacted, and how do we replace or fix or get those utilities back online so that it minimizes the impact to the populace. So knowing where is critical to really understanding spatial analysis. So you've heard it, you've seen it, everybody understands that GIS is this amazing tool that can do all of this amazing analysis, but really what is it? Geographic information systems have been around for the better part of 30 years, um, generally developed by 
the Environmental Systems Research Institute, or ESRI, as you may have heard them called. GIS was really developed to help capture, model, store, manage, and present very complex systems, some would say infinitely complex systems. GIS does this by allowing us to break up the landscape into multiple layers, or breaking it down into multiple layers so that we can better understand and see relationships between those layers. The graphic in the middle of your screen there shows a number of layers including parcels, zoning, floodplains, watersheds, land cover, soils, topography, and so on. Pulling all of that data apart and then mixing it back together we can start to tease out different relationships that we may not have seen before and really help us understand and break down complex systems. So what is GIS science? We hear it quite often, there's a lot of conferences that talk about GIS science, but really GIS science is the underpinning theory of geographic information systems or the tool. So GIS science is referring to how projections and coordinate systems works, the intricacies of data, uh, the theory of GPS, uh, just really the basis of how GIS works. So in short, it is the building block of using geographic information systems. Mixed in with all of this, we have a number of technologies, and we'll cover some of these technologies throughout this lecture series. Obviously, geographic information systems and science, there's a number of components there that we'll discuss. Remote sensing, or the collection of data from remote platforms. Global positioning systems, or GPS. Those are all technologies that we wrap back into this whole idea of geospatial, or GIS. Now just diving right into GIS, there's really six parts of the GIS that you need to be aware of. There's of course the people component. Somebody has to run the system. There's a software component, which we'll be learning throughout this lecture. There's a data component procedures, hardware, and of course a network that this mostly all runs on, or at least the internet that you can receive and transmit data across. All of these components are important. They don't all have to be in place at the same time necessarily, uh, but you will end up using all of them at some point. So getting into GIS a little deeper and starting to scratch the surface, GIS data, or something we call spatial data, is any kind of data that has a unique geographic coordinate that can allow us locate the data or an object or the event in geographic space. The example here is a fire hydrant. We have a fire hydrant. In this case this fire hydrant happens to be located in the town of Franklin, Idaho. And what you can see there is it's on a street corner and it has a spatial location. That X and Y value you can see in the middle of your screen doesn't mean a whole lot to you yet but it will as we start to learn about coordinate systems. So it has some value and we can take that value and in a Cartesian coordinate system or in an XY grid we can put it on a map. And So spatial data can be thought of as any data that we can actually map. Now you use spatial data every day whether you realize it or not. Every time you open up Google Maps you're using spatial data. Every time you look at your phone and look at an app you're generally using some sort of spatial data. All cell phones, whether they're a smartphone or just a feature phone, are generally GPS enabled, so you can transmit GPS data or spatial data. If you dial 911, your phone goes into E911 mode and generally will transmit your GPS or last known GPS location or an assisted GPS location to the dispatchers. Every time you use your credit card, the credit card company knows where you are. Also, if you have a card or a perks card that you use at your local store they can once they scan that they know where you are what you're buying of course navigation uh, is used anytime you start up a, a GPS or if you have a navigation system in your car uh, you're using spatial data now what really makes this spatial data powerful in addition to the XY location or the geographic coordinate is what we call the non-spatial or attribute data the non-spatial attribute data actually describes the object or the event on the ground. So in this case, we're back to our fire hydrant again. Well, we see this list of non-spatial attribute data down below. We have a type fire hydrant. The color of that fire hydrant is red. We can record when it was last fixed, what a flow rate is. We can de describe if it needs a repair. All of that information is considered non-spatial, but it's tied to a spatial location through the XY coordinate. And we'll talk in depth about non-spatial or attribute data in a future lecture.